everyone and welcome back to Leaf Yarns podcast. Today is Friday the 22nd of March and this is episode 13. So I'm recording, oh let's see, it's exactly 12.30. Um, I have been ready since about 8 o'clock this morning. I've just been faffing about and doing my nails and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just general life really, doing a bit of housework. Um, I'm sorry I haven't recorded last week. I wasn't feeling great. Um, physically and mentally and emotionally I've had some life stuff to deal with and I wasn't my best so I wasn't going to sit here and be all mm. so I just thought nope I'll leave it a week and uh, this week just kind of got away from me so sorry but I'm here now so right introductions my name's Ellie and I live in Exeter which is in the southwest of England um, more specifically I live in Alfington which is um, a suburb, I suppose you'd call it, of Exeter. But Al Alfington used to be a village. Um, and it was joined on to Exeter um, a few years ago. I say a few years ago, probably a couple of decades ago now. Um, but yeah, so technically I live in a village, which is quite nice. Um, being a country girl, when I where I was growing up, my next neighbour was half a mile away. So, you know... Um, I don't do well with city people. <laughs> um, yeah, too too many people for me. But anyway, um, I've just realised there's a lot of glare on my glasses. So, let's do that. There we go. And now I've got little wings, but never mind. Right, so in today's show, I have got a what I'm wearing. I'll come to that. I have got knitting, sewing, spinning and shop talk. So I've realised that having two weeks, I get a lot more done. <laughs> so I'm contemplating recording bi-weekly, not weekly. But I've put up a poll on Instagram on my leaf yarns. Um, that's my username there. So go and take part in the poll. It's in my stories. And let me know which you'd rather, you know, weekly with less content or bi-weekly with more content. And I will do, you know, whatever people ask for. So... Um, I have no stash acquisitions for this week. The only thing I got in the post this week was some new backdrops for my photography for the yarns for the shop. So I'll be re-photographing everything on those and making it look more spiffing. Um, I love that word, spiffing. <laughs> um, and I'm also going to be updating the website with new yarns but also updating the website colour scheme because I've realised that it's very just my taste, not public taste. I love purple. And I know lots of you out there also love purple, but I'm thinking a more generic, people-friendly colour scheme. We'll see. Anyway, so, uh, what should we get started with today? Yes, right. What I'm wearing today. Now, I'm recording on the 22nd of March, but I should have been at Edinburgh Yarn Festival. Mm -mm. I can't tell you how much that has upset me. Um, not so much upset me, but I'm very, very disappointed that I couldn't go. It's not what everyone's calling FOMO or fear of missing out or anything else. I have waited years to be able to go to a big festival to meet my friends in person. You know, people like yourselves, um, other podcasters I know, people that I've made friends with online via Ravelry and on, you know through the podcast. And Instagram things um, and I you know I was really excited to be going um, I hadn't counted on not being able to find a dog sitter and we don't like putting the dogs in kennels because you hear so many horror stories and we don't know anyone to recommend a kennel to us and we've got three puppies or oh, I say puppies Joey is five now Phoebe turned one on the 12th of February and Navi is six months old as of two days ago so we have to be very careful and because they're on special diets um, it's a big trust thing with us um, the cats were doing fine you know I have plenty of neighbours who are quite happy to you know come in and feed the cats and whatever but the dogs are like our babies um, so that was a real stickler and we had a year 
you know, to find someone, but we just didn't. So I'm hoping next year I will be coming up with or without Abby, um, because I, I, I'd really like to meet everyone in person. <laughs> but anyway, I know that um, a couple of people are oh, um, going to keep me updated, as it were. So I'm looking forward to seeing everyone's you know, posts on Instagram and vlogs and other podcast videos that were there and things. So I'm really looking forward to that instead. So I'm living very closely through all of you lot. <laughs> right, so this was one of my outfits that I had chosen to wear, um, you know, today if I'd been in Edinburgh. So, my beautiful velvet jacket, because I love this, um, and this jumper. Now, this is a test that I did. I'm going to move back a little bit, and I'll undo my jacket. This, as you can see, it's got a keyhole in the back. Um, this is a test knit that I did for um, Black Crow Knits, and it's called the Summary Tank Top, and that's in my Ravelry page. Um, under my projects and this purple at the top and around the, the edges is my um, amethyst on the yak merino yak silk base that I used to have I don't don't dye that anymore um, it takes color beautifully but it just wasn't popular enough um, the other yarn I don't have a ball band for but it's this beauty I want to bring it closer, but the lights aren't right. So, yes. It's sort of a greyish blue, and it's heathered, and it's got all sorts of different colours in it. Um, but yeah, it's beautiful. And it's an alpaca merino blend, and it blocks beautifully. So, yes. I really like this top. I'm very tempted to knit another one. So that's what I'm wearing. Oh, and you know, you don't want to see my bottom half, but I'm wearing ripped jeans with lacy tights, because that's just you know, part of me, the way I am. <laughs> um, okay, so I will move on to knitting. Now, my Oxbow cardigan, I've done 10 rows, um, so I'm not going to show you, because it would be a whole lot of haranguing around, and you know, it's just here. It's just here. Um, a whole lot of faff and not a lot of show. So, I have, as much as I love that jumper, I've fallen out with actually knitting it. Um, nothing's wrong with it. It's just chunky and slow, and I don't understand why it's taking me so long. Other than the fact that it's... Um, it is a simple pattern, but at the same time it's not. There's a lot going on at once. So it's slow because you have to keep track of everything. So I'm very much, you know, do a few rows here, a few, few, few rows, words, <laughs> a few rows there. Um, but yeah, but I have been working on my Find Your Fade shawl, which is here. In this bag. It's nearly finished. I've got, how many rows do I work at? I've got seven rows left and then the cast off or bind off. So... Find Your Fade Shawl by Andrea Mary, who's Drea, Andrea Renee Knits, which is this beauty. And I'm on the final colour at last. My final colour is Nara. And it's by Third Volt Yarns. And it's this beauty. It's absolutely glorious colour. It's really rich, look, African violet colour. Um, so I had this much left of the Moondrop from Bill and Vine and this much left of the Transformers from their makers. This much left of, um, I can't remember what it's called, but this is also Bill and Vine yarn. And I had this much left of a Five Moons one. The, um, this colour, the, sec the second colour, 
onto the second color. Yes, the second color I used was actually a lace weight that I held double. Um, so there's, you know, there's enough left to make another shawl, I think, if it's a small one. So, I will, you hear that flop to the floor? <laughs> it's huge! Um, so, put it the right way around so you can see. Right, just be careful it doesn't fall off the needles. Okay, so, last time I recorded, I was, yeah, so I was a couple of rows, a couple of lace repeats into this colour, so I'd done this much. Well, since then, I have zoomed along in the last couple of weeks, it's been my main project, so I've done lots, let's see if you can see the stitch marker, there you go. And I absolutely love it. So this is the final colour. I'm nearly, nearly, nearly done. See, there's the spine here, because it shifts. And I've got all this. Isn't that beautiful? So I'm going to get this finished either today or tomorrow, and then I can, you know, soak it and block it and weave in all these ends. Um, and then start to wear it. I want to wear it next time I record. So, yeah. Isn't it lovely? I will never get tired of showing this. It's huge. Absolutely ginormous. So, I'm knitting this on 3.75mm needles, as per the pattern. Um, I'm pretty much on gauge, I think. You know, when I did the, the swatch, it was fine. Um, yeah, I'm loving it. So I'm just glad, really glad that I have blocking wires because I'm going to need them. <laughs> um, I have lots of pins, but um, I really want this to be straight. So this I will be blocking on yoga mats because I don't have, you know, blocking, blocking mats. Um, in my head, they're exactly the same as yoga mats. So, you know, um, yeah. I'm definitely going to be making another one and I'm using uh, these two colours in it so Kristen's sparkly one and her moon drop so this is on her oh, blitzed base and this one's on her nouveau base these are um, these two for the start of the other one I've got both the tags here, yes. Okay, so this one is Poe. And it's super, uh, just 100% superwash single ply merino. Poe. Cats. <laughs> they love labels. And the other one, the other one's Moondrop on her blitzed base. So those two will be going into my next shawl. Now I do have a tiny bit more of the Poe. Um, if I run out of this one, because I accidentally snapped it when I was handballing it, um, because it wasn't a cake and it got really messy, so uh, I re I rewound it. So this will be the first colour, and this will be the second colour in my next one, and then I'll be doing it gradually darker and darker to pitch black. So uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. Um, and I'm literally going to start that one as soon as I finish this one. Once this one's blocking, I shall cast on another one. Because it's just such a lovely thing to be working on. You know, I can do a few rows and, oh, it's it's really, I hate the phrase, but it is potato chip knitting. You know, and I can, I can knit on it watching telly and everything else. And it's the same to me as knitting socks. You know, even with the lace bits, it's such simple lace work that I don't really need to concentrate because it's like... You know, in order to see if I've gone wrong, I just have to count falls. And it's like, mm. so there you go. So, if anyone's got any recommendations of grey or black yarns, um, please let me know. Otherwise, I will just, you know, have a good rummage in the stash. I mean, I've got a couple in there that I want to use. Um, but I plan to dye some as well. But I'd like to have, you know, some other dyes in there as well, apart from myself and Kristen's. 
So, pop that down there. Now, yes, I started that, oh, what's it, two years ago now? Um, approximately, when everyone else, you know, cast theirs on, I was like, oh, I need to cast this on, it's beautiful, it's huge. Um, and then, of course, I stopped knitting for a while completely. You know, about ten months I did no knitting at all, apart from one pair of socks for Abby. Um, so it didn't get worked on. But, you know, in the last couple of weeks I've zoomed through and I'm nearly done and I'm really wanting to knit another one. As well as about ten other Andrea Murray patterns, um, including lots of the shifty versions. I love those. Um, and I've got lots of them in my basket and in my queue. So, yes moving on because this pattern this piece that I'm doing next I cast on and I shouldn't have <laughs> because okay it's in my make nine for 2019 which is the challenge on Instagram and Ravelry and you know elsewhere but I wanted to finish something else before I cast this on I didn't <laughs> I have not been working on my Neria for the last couple of weeks um, as beautiful as it is it just hasn't called to me and I've not been working on my own pattern design either. So that will be coming soon, but not, you know, it may, it should still be out by my birthday, which is in about seven weeks, eight weeks, but possibly not. We'll see. I do still need a test knitter for a medium size, though. Um, I'm happy to post it, you know, to, to release the pattern without one of the sizes being knit. Um, because all the math is accurate but I, in my own head I'd be a lot happier if I could find someone to test it just that you know that last size which is a 36 inch bust um, so yeah if you're willing please let me know so this next project is living in this bag which is a gothy bag that I won on Instagram a few years ago and it's got this beautiful lining Absolutely beautiful. I love cherry blossoms. But I have cast on my No Frill Sweater by Petite Knits. Now this is a jumper I couldn't remember the name of last week and I got completely wrong so I'm so sorry if I get you all confused. Um, now I'm knitting the smallest size because it is a 100cm chest circumference which is 39 inch in inches. Um, now the recommended ease is, oh I can't remember, it's a few inches but what I like to do with my jumpers is take the measurement, the finished measurement that it is as a tape measure and then hold it and see how much ease it's got and you know can I breathe in and out and blah 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 and then I you know compare that measurement to a few other jumpers I have so I know what I like to wear and what I do wear as opposed to what I think I like to wear. Um, so this jumper in the extra small size is the same as one of my favourite store-bought jumpers. Um, so I know I'm going to get a lot of wear out of it. So I am using two colours obviously. You hold a fingering weight yarn together with um, <coughs> <clears throat> a mohair yarn. So I'm using Berger de France Angel in the Parve colourway, which I've had in my stash for a long time. Originally, this is going to be a set for Kimberly when she was little. I say little, she was about six when I bought this yarn. So it's a decade. Um, and I bought a Berger de France pattern for it. Um, and then I'm using my fingering weight, uh, this is Merino Nylon. And this is the Pretty Gritty colourway. So it's greys and blacks, um, or black speckles with pink speckles on a uh, sort of variegated, more tonal um, grey. And then it has a very few uh, blue specks where the black has broken down. So I am needing to move on to bigger needles, but I'm enjoying the fact that it's on a smaller circumference at the moment. So, let's see. 
Mm -hmm. Now, I have a back stitch marker here to show which is the front. Can you see that? Okay. So, here it is so far. Yes, it's very scrunched up. Um, so it's actually like that. I'm about to lose a stitch. Go back on the needle. There we go. So I'm going to hold this and see if I can zoom in. There we go. So you can see the speckles of pink pops throughout. It's not heavy speckles, but there's enough to make it really wow. I love it so much. And I'm going to be doing the Pretty Gritty um, again with purple instead of the pink and with teal instead of the pink because I think they'll be beautiful. So, and this is one of my favourite stitch markers. It's just a little witch's broom. And my bat. Okay. Isn't that so cute? It's just fine though, but it's really cute. Now I have two of these, and one of them I have on my charm bracelet, but this one, um, I use my knitting. So yeah, can you see this halo? Isn't that lovely? So let's bring you back to me. Hello. <laughs> so I'm using... Um, 3mm and 4mm needles. I'm now on the 4mm needles. Um, I did a gay swatch because I was a good girl. Um, and then very, very, very difficultly and carefully tinked it back so I'd have enough yarn. Uh, now I do have three skeins of the um, Pretty Gritty for myself. And I have... Oh, how many of this have I got? I've got another five of this one. So I do have plenty of yardage. But I didn't want to unnecessarily use yarn that I didn't have to. Um, this is very quick to knit. I've probably sat and knit on this for about three hours. And I am nearly done with the raglan shaping. Um, the one thing I will say about this pattern though, as lovely as it's working out, it took forever to get my head around such a simple thing. Now... I'm not a beginner knitter. I have been knitting for, you know, nearly two decades. But the pattern, I'm sorry, isn't written very well, in my opinion. Um, you know, everyone's got their opinion, so don't shoot me. Um, but there's too many words for such a simple description. And what I realised was I could make it so much simpler if I just used lots of stitch markers. Because, now I'm not going to go into too many details, but the way it's described is very... Um, confusing um, for the increases and everything else but as soon as I put in stitch markers uh, multiples of stitch markers immediately it clicked so you know now I'm loving it and it's very fast but in the beginning it was very confusing and every round I had to concentrate really hard um, because I didn't understand the way it was written and it wasn't very clear um, you know once you got past the neck band so just a word of warning when you knit this you know everyone has been saying how easy it is and everything else yes it is if you can understand it um, so if you need any help translating this pattern if you've actually bought this pattern then you know send me a message and I will help you translate it into more understandable instructions it's only the first set of instructions past the collar, the neck band that are confusing and then it's just you know plain sailing. But yeah, so I want to get this finished as soon as I can. Um because I'm hoping it'll be a go to plain jumper. Um I have already seen um some more mohair type yarn that I want to get in there's a black one dark purple and a medium purple so that I can use those with other knits um, because this isn't the only jumper in my queue that is held double with mohair I'm just stroking it because it's really soft <laughs> it's so soft I was worried actually that I'd react to the mohair being scratchy because I'm so sensitive um, but actually no not yet anyway we'll see how it feels when I'm actually wearing it um, but yeah it's lovely so, that is my other main project I've been working on. 
So let's pop that away. Oh, I like this. Look, I keep forgetting to show this bit. It's a tree of life charm. Isn't it pretty? So let's pop that down there. Now, that is all my knitting this week. Just pop that out of the way. Um, I have done a couple of rounds on a sock. Not going to show you. <laughs> There's just no point. It's literally like that much different. Um, you've seen it before. Um, it's the one with the blue and the red. and Yeah, it's very pretty. Um, but one thing I do want to talk about to you is crochet. Now, I've not done a lot of crochet recently. I think I've done one row on my crochet, my granny stripe crochet blanket. And I've done one square on my granny square blanket. But living in here, by Miss Brown's bag, this is all mini skeins that I have to ball up and put into my granny stripe blanket. Now I've got lots of squares in there. Um, but I have loads and loads and loads in here. It's full. Now, admittedly, most of them are Sarah's Texture Crafts because I absolutely love her colourways. Um, and when she sold up her company, what, 18 months ago now? Yeah, it'll be two years in August. I was, oh no. I was really sad. I've bought from Sarah for many, many years. Um, there was never, I've never had a single issue with her or her quality or her products. Um, you know, custom service was immaculate sort of thing. So when she stopped, I was just like, oh. Oh. But now she's doing the craft biz incubator stuff and she's my indie blog, I think, on Instagram. But I bought my Ashford um, e-spinner from her. Um, because she used to be an Ashford um, stockist here in the UK. So that was brilliant because it meant that I didn't have to um, personally import it from Australia and, you know, pay all those excess um, import fees and things. But, yes, so I have got lots to put in. These, oh, I love these. These are from Elm Tree Yarns. It's my Peter Rabbit set. Her Beatrix Potter collection. Yeah. And then I've got some from Friends. Now this this lot's from Margaret. Hi Margaret. Um, who's um, not in the UK. <clears throat> but yeah. There's lots and lots and lots in there. I've probably got about a hundred mini skeins in here that I need to put into my blanket. So I will be putting a dent in that because I really miss it. And they're so quick, you know, so 20 minutes done. Um, you know, another 10 minutes joining it to the blanket. It's not that difficult. I just need to get on with it. So, yeah. So, I, ironically, I'm about to talk about sewing. Um, this week, I decided that it's been too long since I've done any sewing again. So, I have, um, excuse all the puns, been making plans... And I finally organised all the patterns I want to try to make this year. And I don't have fabric for all of them. Um, but I will just grab the pile. And show you. So just move that one off there because that's what I'm currently doing. So I have all of these. Now I showed them on Instagram. But I figured, you know, I would just show you today. So... I have grouped them into piles of tops, bottoms, etc. So, I really want to make this, this version, with the lace band across, but it won't be in those colours. Now, I had to retake all my measurements recently, because since I've got better, um, my health has improved. Now, just before Christmas, I decided that it was about time um, that I stopped being scared and um, start eating different things again. I've been on a very, very strict diet to help with my various um, health issues, we'll say. Um, and I've gained weight, and I've gained a lot of weight. Not that it looks much like it on here, but I've actually gone up two dress sizes. 
So everything that I've made last year doesn't fit. Um, most of my clothes don't fit, so I need to make clothes <laughs> because I, I, I can't afford to replace all my clothes in the shops. Um, so this has been very much a welcome opportunity to start sewing a lot. So I'm hoping that most weeks I'll have some sewing on the podcast. Um, so yeah, two dress sizes in two months. Um, yeah, <laughs> a bit paranoid there, but it's settling down now. So you know. So this one um, is for stretch knits, and I'm really looking forward to making that. It'll give me some wiggle room as well. Um, and then the next one is. Uh, sorry, this one was New Look 6285. I will link all of these, or write all of these down in the show notes so that you can look them up if you, you know, you like one of them. This one is Birder Style 6990. And I got this one because A, it's knit fabric or jersey fabric, but it's got lots of different styles on it. Now, I love this one, and I love this one. I do like a cowl. You know, a loose cowl, not a, a polo neck or a roll neck. I like things to be loose and drapey. So, E, this one, I'm really looking forward to making. And this one, this I like as a shape. You know, a nice, gentle scoop neck. Um, so, but I will be doing some long sleeves, some short sleeve. Uh, this one is New Look 6762. And I bought this because of the t-shirt pattern that's with it. I used to wear a lot of long skirts. Um, and I still will wear long skirts. I just don't have any currently. But for now, I need to make some tops. So those are very simple. And they don't use much yardage. It's only... Um, 1 meter 20 That, you know, you can... That's not going to be expensive. Now another one that I am desperate to make is the rotor shirt by Tilling the Buttons, which is this. Now this was everywhere for a while. If you just type in Tilling the Buttons Rosa hashtag on Instagram, there are thousands. Um, but I really like all the piping details and things. And I've got some beautiful fabric that I want to make it with. So I'm going to have a go at that one. Now this one, um, it says all shirt sizes use up to 2 metres. It's not a big investment, you know, you can, if you've got a budget, you can get, you know, two metres of fabric quite reasonably, um, and, you know, if, you, if you've got a bit more money, you can go crazy, but it's only two metres of fabric, so in a way, this is a good pattern to have as a treat. And then, one of the patterns I got recently, or last year, was this one, which is the Vogue. This is a Vogue shirt pattern, and it's V8689. Now, I want to make um, B and C, so these two. Um, this one is longer with a slightly curved hem, and this one's just shorter standard. Because I've discovered that the shirts I have in my wardrobe that fit, or blouses, um, are those styles. And they're the ones I feel most comfortable in. Just because I'm so petite and um, I have petite bust, I need things to flatter as opposed to try and show off or hide. Um, so, yeah. And this one is one of those custom fit bust cups, which is great. Because a lot of shirt patterns, and I'm sure I will run into this issue when I do the birder, a lot of, bust, a lot of tops have a much bigger bust cup size that they're aimed at than I have personally. So to be able to find, you know, a smaller cup pattern, brilliant. And then it means that I can modify my other patterns and, you know, draft one with the other sort of thing. But anyway, excuse me if you can hear my tummy growling, it's nearly lunchtime. The next one is another Tilly in the Buttons. Now I picked this one up when my local shop was uh, closing down. It was bunyip beads, but they've, they've just relocated. So this is the Fifi set. And I love this so much. This is my sort of pyjamas. 
I love these. So cool in the in the summer. And you know, if you use thicker fabric, they'll be warm in the winter as well. But yeah. Now I say that because we have teddy bear fleece duvet cover, so <laughs> I can wear what I like in bed and stay warm. <laughs> now my most recent pattern purchase is the Land of Pant and Shorts by True Bias. So I'm going to be making some of these, but I'm going to be making shorts first because it does use a lot of yardage for what it is, which is, it's confusing me. I mean, I know having, you know, made lots of pyjamas over the years, they eat fabric. But I don't understand why I need two metres for a pair of shorts. We'll see. But, um, yeah. But then, you know, when you look at the back, it's two metres from a size zero to a size 18. I don't know. But we'll see. I'm really looking forward to it anyway. Now, skirt pattern is this one, which is New Look 6327. Now, I want to make B, which is um, this, effectively, with a lace layer over the top. Now, a couple of years ago, I bought some beautiful Italian lace, um, but it needs to be over another fabric because... It's so lacy, there's lots of big gapes in it. So it needs to be stabilised over something else. Otherwise it will just you know, not work. Um, so I should be making B. Um, I may do it shorter, I may do it longer. I don't know. I will see how I feel when I'm actually sewing it. Likelihood is, it will be an ankle length skirt. But it may be above the knee. I'll, I'll see what happens on the day. But I will show you, obviously. Um, another one I want to make is New Look 6509. Now, I bought this as kind of dare to myself, really, because it's got all these cut-out bits on it. And I was like, oh, now then, that's tempting. But I also realised, now don't shoot me, but I am now the age where I shouldn't really be showing off my sides. In that way I'm not 16 I'm not 14 you know I'm not going to the beach in it so I'm just going to be making the one that um, doesn't have any cutouts because then it's more flattering and what's the right word modest that's the word modest um, yeah you know I mean if if I have my waist tattooed which I will be getting my you know the tops of my hips done at some point if I had that then I would, you know, do this sort of thing, but um, wear something with it so it's just a peak. It's not, look, I'm on show. But we'll see. So that's just a nice fitted dress with a bit of ease in it, so I'll be comfortable. Um, and this one uses uses a one meter forty. Again, it's steel. This is another one of the very easy, very vogue ones with the custom fits. I do have some fabric for this. Um, it has bats on. <laughs> I may make it in my cat fabric, I don't know. You know, it's. I wanted to make a cute one. A bit of fun for the summer. And the same goes for this one, which is the V9252. But these are fabric eaters. You know, in this this one uses four meters, and this one uses four meters. So those have to be more budget ones. But luckily, I already got fabric for them. <clears throat> now this one is Cynthia Rowley, and I came across her by accident because she was on Simplicity, um, and this is the pattern two two one five. Now I like the dress and the blouse on this. I won't make this skirt. I might make this go. I don't know. <laughs> I like all of it. Um, but I think with my petite figure, this would look quite cute. So, yes. But I wouldn't wear the top with the skirt. The top would be worn with jeans, and the skirt would be worn, you know, with a, a, a top like the, like the one I'm wearing here today. So, yes. And I need two metres for that dress. And um, about a metre and a half for the top. So, it's not too bad. Two left. Okay, so my another recent. These are both 
also recent ones. Um, in fact, this is my most recent one, not the the trousers. This is the Clio by Tilly and the Buttons. Now, this is a dungaree dress. Now, I do have a dungaree dress, and I have dungaree long trousers, and I have dungarees with shorts. Um, and I love how comfortable they are. So I figured I'd make some, you know. So this was the perfect way to start. Um, the mini length on this uses 1.2 metres of fabric. brilliant it's it it works out cheaper than the shops <laughs> you know unless you shop in Primark um not saying I don't shop in Primark I just try really hard not to um but yeah so the fabric in this new 1.2 meters and it's a heavy or medium woven weight oh, weight woven fabric such as denim corduroy cotton drill garbadine um, canvas and wool now I have no idea where to get garbadine what is garbadine? I've looked at it, you know, up on it for years and years and years, and it's just, it looks just like heavy fabric. But I can never find anyone haberdasher is, you know, or fabric shops. So, but I would really like to make a couple of these, maybe three. Um, I know that I really want to make a corduroy one, and I want to make a jacquard one, um, so that I can wear fun stuff with the corduroy one and plain stuff with the, the jacquard one but then I want to make a fun one anyone got any fabric suggestions? let me know I'm really excited to be making those I've already got the dungaree snaps and things but anyway the last one I want to make um, I was inspired by Kristen last year who's full and vine and she made this Nina Lee dress but she made it with and without these bits. So this is the Q dress. Now I need between 2 and 2.1 metres of this. Now I have got some fabric that I can use, which is my teal uh, fabric that's got ghosts and trees and dresses and things on it and cats and gravestones, which would look really cute. Um, but I'd also like to make it plain. Um, now it requests lightweight, lightish weight fabric, so I can imagine this looking absolutely beautiful in a linen viscose blend or something like that. Um, but I really want to make this one. I'm not sure if I will include the uh, the what are they called um, cold sleeves, cold shoulder sleeves. It's just an extra wing of fabric. But, um, yeah, I want to make it without. Because I used to wear, when I was younger, dresses like that without the sleeve bits. That was my go-to. You know, I'd put them on and they'd see me through the day. You know, work, play, whatever. Love them. Lovely shape. So I'm really looking forward to making some of those. Those will probably become my, my summer staple. But they've got to be in my taste of fabrics. Not, you know, just generic what I can find sort of fabrics. Um, I really want my wardrobe, now that I've had to sort of pretty much start from scratch, I want my wardrobe to truly reflect me as I am now, with my tastes as they are now. You know, I've reached the age where I don't feel like I should hide who I am anymore. You know, I'm goth, people. You know, yes, I tone it down because I'm not a teenager and um, when I was a teenager, I was the whole Morticia drag thing, you know, um, not drag, but, you know, it was full on heavy goth, you know, white makeup, you know, really heavy makeup and corsets and all that stuff. And I would wear them everywhere, you know, and people would always shout Halloween remarks or, you know, slurs or, um, just vile things at me. And I hid it, you know. I When I had the children, I stopped. And for a few years, I became mumsy next door. And I felt so out of place. Yes, I fitted in, but it wasn't me. Um, you know, and I, I've had such a journey in my life over the last few years that I feel that I owe it to myself to be comfortable and confident. So... This is the end result. <laughs> you know, not 
horrendously goth and weirdo looking but me so yes anyway weird rant but those are the patterns that I want to be making this year if I don't get them all done I have the rest of my life it's fine but I need to be making clothes it's not just a like making clothes I need to be doing it and it will you know it'll make me feel good that I've made the clothes it's less money because a lot of the pieces I already have the fabric for in my in my my stash I don't have a big stash but I have enough that several of the pieces I can make two items out of case in point I have cut out the fabric for this shirt here now this is new look pattern number 6952 and I'm doing E which has got the um, you know, I want to say half sleeves um, I originally thought I'd only have enough fabric for this one but I don't I do actually have enough for this one so I'm using up some fabric that I already made a skirt out of and another top but I didn't love them so I didn't wear them there's not you know I love the fabric it just didn't look right in that pattern so I'm hoping third time lucky that um, it'll work so I'll just lift off the scrap it is it's been scrunched up but it's this fabric which is the ghastly web fabric it is actually written on the side here a ghastly web de Leon design group the Alexander Henry fabrics collection 2013 I bought this when it came out I was like ooh because I followed him so this is absolutely beautiful I love moths ironically as a knitter I love moths not wool moths I love every other moth um, and it's got spider webs and uh, a few wasps and leaves now you all know I hope you know by now I love leaves you know leaf yarns leaf tattoos <laughs> Um, so this is very much my my taste in fabric and it is slightly gothy but it's not blatant which I like I like the subtlety so I have cut out all the pieces and this is what I plan to be sewing today whilst I am editing the podcast and you know waiting for the export and uploading everything else so I'm really excited and if I manage to get it finished I'll wear it next week um, not quite sure how it's going to work with my find your fade jewel we'll see but yeah um now the scraps this is this is all i have left originally i had i think about three or four meters um because they were having a sale and there was a 20 percent discount code um for being a loyal member or something or you know a shopper's loyalty discount so i managed to get yeah, I managed to get four meters the price of three, that's right. So it was still an investment, but you know, I've I've made three pieces out of it, and the rest I'm going to be making a project bag. Um I'm gonna just, you know, piece it together and do a sort of Frankenstein on it. And then I should be adding some embroidery and beadwork and everything else, and I will love it. And I'll be doing the same thing with this fabric that if you remember, it's all in the little bag. I made a dress with this fabric and I wore it on the podcast. Fits my chest fine. Nothing else. There is fabric left in the seams deliberately so that if I did gain weight, which I have and I'm very happy about it, don't get me wrong, you know, don't go going, oh, you're only skinny, you know, you should gain weight. I'm happy with it. But anyway, I'm going to make a project bag out of this one as well. Um, exactly the same thing, you know, making sort of a patchwork. I'm not bothered if they're all different shapes. I'll sew them all together and then make the bag from that. Um, and again, I want to add some beads and embroidery to make them really special um, because I absolutely adore this fabric. Um, so much so that I really want to get it in the other two colours. There's teal and there's a more mauvey pink colour that I would absolutely love. And I'll make shirts as opposed to dresses so this one there's a piece here it's called Angela's Attic it's also De Leon, De Leon Designs Alexander Henry so there you go and that so yeah and I oh this is this is one of the reasons I bought it because it has lace bats I really want to get this little guy tattooed 
I have a bat leg and I want to add some hands to it. Oh, I can leg there anyway. Right, so the other thing that I have whipped out, just move those. I am going to be making um, this week a um, new look pattern K6483. And I've had this pattern a long time um, because it came with Sew Magazine. I bought it and then I got this copy with the magazine. But I'm making this one, which is E. Now this uses 1.3 metres. 1.2 metres. But I'm allowing 1.3 metres so that I've got wiggle room. And I am using... Now, if you remember... Um, I made a dress, um, it was a sew over it dress using this fabric. Now I'm not sure if you've seen it on this podcast that I'm under now or my old podcast. It's the LC dress I think. I can't remember. Next time I wear it. I will, you know, show you. So this fabric was a gift from a very dear friend. Um, hi Isabel. And this is what I have left after my dress. And I said to her at the time, I have plenty left to make something else. Now I have a feeling there will be enough here. I mean, there's a metre and a half maybe. Um, but if I'm, if I'm careful with the way I lay out the pattern, I should have enough for this top and a skirt or some very, I was going to say short shorts, but I don't wear very short shorts. Um, but some detailing on shorts, so pockets or something else. Because I really need to get every piece of this that I can used. Because it's so special. Now this is viscose, but it's dandelions and grass. Now I absolutely love dandelions. They are very sentimental to me. Um, I mean, I have one on my wrist here for my children. And there's, because I have three children, I have three flying off. So they can, you know, it represents them being allowed to live their own lives and be who they want to be, with my blessing, you know. So for me, dandelions are very special. Um, all of my children have always called them wishes and fairies. And I'm one of those annoying people that let their kids blow them around the garden. We had guinea pigs, so the guinea pigs had the yellow bits, and then we played with the white bits. And dandelion makes nice tea. So, it was a win-win. I don't call them weeds. To me, they are nature's beautiful flowers. And they're beautiful in every phase, so, yes. So I have this, so that will be this one. So that will be a quick sew, I'm hoping. And the final thing I want to try and have a go at doing this week is a dress that I bought this beautiful brocade fabric years and years and years ago, about 12 years ago um, no, before Kira was born, she's now 14 so between Kim and Kira, so it's about 15 years old this fabric, can you see it? it's sort of paisley, it's absolutely beautiful now I started making a dress out of it didn't take any notes, lost the pattern, not got a clue now, I know it's an empire, and I know it's got princess seams, or part princess seams. Um, that's all I know. Um, it got put away when I got too ill to do anything else, other than, you know, knit on socks. So, um, I will be trying to find a pattern that I can adjust this dress with, and actually make it wearable. Because it's such beautiful fabric, and I really, really want to wear it. It's lightweight, it breathes, it washes beautifully. Um, so yeah. And because it's not finished, there's plenty of fabric in it. You know, I've just done basic seams. They are, if I show you, they are serged. I don't know if you can see that. Um, but I can, you know, I can lose that four millimetres and there's still another centimetre if I need to. So, yes. So 
that's my my sewing makings and plannings. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to be actually sewing again. So yes, now that was a lot of sewing talk. <laughs> if you're not a sewist, I have no interest in sewing. Maybe have a think about having a go. Yes? No? Okay. Right. Spinning. Now, spinning. There is not a lot of spinning this week. I have literally done... Um, is it in here? Yes. I bought this new spindle because one of mine got sat on by one of my children. It's just blue with gold flecks in it. And I'm just spinning up the sample that came on it. And I can't remember, because it's been a couple of years, maybe a year, no, two years, if it's Wensleydale or uh, I think it's Manx Lawton or the other the other one I had a feeling it might have been was South Down. But this is it. It's got a very long staple. I'd say it's about a seven inch staple. Um, so I don't know. It's quite thick. It's not soft. It's definitely... Um, it could be next to skin, but when, when it's spun, it becomes more like string or twine. So, um, we'll see. But I'm spinning this. Oh, it's gone all funny. And the idea is that I will um, over-dye it. Just ever so slightly to give it a hint of colour, and then I will plan to use it in a shawl. Probably with another yarn, because I've not got a lot here. There's maybe an ounce. Um, so we'll see what I get. But it, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it anyway. It's just a little bit. And this is living in a deliberate spinning, spindle spinning project bag that I got from my friend Alex a long time ago. Because... I love My Little Ponies. I still like My Little Ponies, um, but I don't have anything in My Little Pony now except for project bags and a couple of pieces that I had to keep and put in storage. <laughs> but yes, so it's very cute. So that's one of my spinning projects. Now my other one, is it unplugged? Yes, I did unplug it. So this, I'm actually spinning up for my friend. Now if you remember, I spoke about spinning up a yarn and then ruining it by then plying it the same direction by accident. Well, oops, this is it. That's the wrong colour on camera. But it's a very royal purple. And what I mean is, when I plied it, it didn't... I'm going to... You see, it didn't take the plying. So effectively it's just three strands sat next to each other. Now I could go back and spin it the other way to ply it the other way and it will be fine. I am umming and ahhing about what to do with it. So if you have any suggestions let me know because this was supposed to be part of a gradient but I started with the rest of the colours. So these are from Felt Few Fibres and I bought this deliberately to spin for my friend and it's the Peacock Colours Gradient Bat Set 100 grams and it's all merino that's her no oh excuse me I had the hiccup and I spun two colours and these are the ones I have left so it goes from royal blue through the purples through blues into this beautiful tealy green um so I've done two of them, but I've got this little piece to blend. I always like to blend when I'm doing gradient, a little piece, it's just a tiny thin strip with a piece of fluff on it, and I break down the bats into long strips and then I spin them like this, but this one I'll be holding together with a very thin strip of the next colour so that it is a true gradient. Let me just wrap that back up, just loose nest it. So I'm going to pick up my spinning wheel now and I hope I don't drop it or anything so that you can see because this is the benefit of having an e-spinner. Um, 
Oh my hand, I text message. So this is what I've got on here. Now it's really showing up the wrong colours, I do apologise. But can you see here, this is the first colour and this is the second colour. Now those are nice purples. Um obviously then you know this is this one. And this one is sort of between this one and this one. So that is two minus a little bit, two bumps. And then I shall now hope apply it. I'm hoping to get between um, a sport weight and a DK so that that person can then have a bit more yardage but a bit thicker because by the time they probably get round to knitting with it, it'll be cooler again. So um, we'll see. But my aim is to get it done this week. Um, I've not got much knitting plans this week other than. Uh, a couple of samples and a bit more of my test knit and things. I have lots of plans for this week. It's Friday. We'll see. We'll see what I get done by Wednesday. But yeah, so that's my spinning. Um, and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Um, that was just a couple of hours yesterday. Um, and now that I'm not spinning it ever so, ever so stupidly fine, like this, because I was spinning it on this which is my lightest weight spindle I've got, which is a holly shaft and then compressed fabric. Now, can you see that's two strands on there? Ignore the, ignore the fluffy bit, but that there is two strands. So it's ever so stupidly fine because I was trying to spin so I could do a Navajo ply lace weight so they can knit a gradient shawl. Um, but I spun it the wrong way and then I was like, mm, no. So I'm doing it thicker now. It's still perfect yarn, you know, it'll still be able to be used. But I did sort of kick myself up the bum a bit and go, oh, drat. So yes. So that was a lot, wasn't it? <laughs> um, the last piece I have to talk to you about today is the shop. Now, there are two new colourways going up today. One of them is Nettle, which I dyed a while ago. I didn't quite love enough, so I, I re-dyed it last week, Monday or Tuesday, and now it's, it's perfect. So, I've got two colourways this week, and then I will briefly hold up the other colourways. No, I'm not going to hold them up. I will do a, a video montage at the end. When I've re-photographed them, do a video and insert that. So, the first one like I said, is Nettle, which is this beauty. And here it is, is the mini skein. So this one has this, um, I want to say midnight colour. It's sort of a blue-black, um, slightly grey. And then it's got this gorgeous um, purpley berry colourway. And then another greyish colour that's sort of brownish. Um, let's see, I, mm, I just think it's beautiful. And then it's got this green. So this is Nettle, um, and it's based on a photograph that I found of Nettles. Um, and it was just so stunning, I couldn't not dye it. So, there we go. It's not showing. That's just a bit of the end. So I'm absolutely in love with this. But I will be posting this on Instagram anyway, so you'll be able to see it properly. And then the other colour is Fig. Now, I've been waiting to dye Fig for a while. I have a lot of colours I'm dyeing up. I've got 77 left to dye this year. Um, Self so striping. And then I've got, I think, 50... 49... 49 semi solid or you know and speckles that I want to do so this is fig so it goes from this undyed well it's not undyed it looks undyed there's a tiny hint of color on this so when you hold this next to an undyed skein you can see there's something on there and then you've got this fleshy color and then you've got this which is sort of a I want to say a rusty pink 
and then this beautiful dark rich purple which I'm going to be dyeing myself a jumper out of <laughs> because I think it's stunning so here it is as a mini skein pulled up on the sparkly because I love the sparkly so yes so those two are going in the shop at six o'clock today likelihood is the podcast won't be up by six o'clock today but you'll know to have a look tomorrow so that's it um thank you for watching and if you like the show please like and subscribe down below all show notes will be down below and on Ravelry in the group um thread uh so it's leaf yarns podcast there and everywhere really um instagram facebook ravelry youtube um and leafyarns.com for the shop um the last thing i want to say to you this week is thank you very much to those of you who are subscribers and keep coming back every week to watch the show i very much appreciate you you have no idea what it means to me to have people spend time with me in so much, you know, such a busy world with everything that's going on out there. Thank you very much for, you know, sharing your time with me. So, I hope you all have a good week. Enjoy your spinning and sewing and everything else. Uh, knitting, crochet, weaving, you know, whatever your rabbit hole is, enjoy it. Look after yourselves and I'll see you all soon. Bye.